Okay, this video is called High Fat Meal, MPO, and Blood Flow. MPO is myeloperoxidase, which is released by neutrophils, the most common white blood cell in the blood. But first of all, we have to go over the arterial lining, uh, the coating on the endothelial cells called the glycocalyx. And the reason I'm going through all this stuff is in order to understand blood flow, atherosclerosis, this stuff is really important to know, and it'll be pretty easy. It seems like a lot of stuff right now, but once I explain it, it'll be pretty easy. And this is going to factor into all kinds of major vascular disease, brain damage, and kidney damage. I'm, I'm giving you the, the components of the anatomy to make sense of it all. Trust me, this is, I think this is a fantastic paper. I'm going to go through a paper, and it's going to be really interesting. So let's start out with the lining of the endothelial cells. Endothelial cells are the cells that cover your arteries. They're the ones that are in contact with the blood as it flows by. They have a glycocalyx on top of them. You can think of the glycocalyx as sticking up from the cell like the way trees stick up from the side of a hill. Okay. The plasma membrane is located, you know, it's the outer barrier of the cell. But then you have these core proteins that stick up from the uh, plasma membrane. Typical core protein is called a syndican. We'll come back to that, but just remember syndican is the core protein. Then they've got these repeating uh, sugar units here. The sugar units are called glycosaminoglycans, but the important one to know about is heparin sulfate. And whenever you hear heparin, think negative charge. Sulfate, think negative charge. And there's a reason for that. A negative charge in relationship to a blood cell or a blood vessel is called a zeta potential. The other word for negative charge is anionic. The key thing is that everything is negative charge under normal conditions. The red blood cells, the endothelial glycocalyx, and the white blood cells. And because they all have negative charges on them, they all repel each other. So you got a negative charge on your heparin sulfates because they got lots of sulfates in them. And as a matter of fact, water has a dipole, meaning a partial charge distribution whereby on the oxygen, it has a negative charge, but its hydrogens have a slight positive charge, and they line up in contact with the glycocalyx, and they make it slippery. It's just like that old expression, slippery when wet, okay? At the ends of the, uh, of the glycosaminoglycans, the heparin sulfate units, you have a, a capping with a sialic acid. It's kind of like, you know, the same thing like on a shoelace. You cap the tip of a shoelace. The sialic acids are read by the immune system for identity. If something is self or non-self, there's a characteristic sialic acid. Okay, so this is the endothelial glycocalyx. Endothelial glycocalyx from the, you know, top to the bottom of the core protein and whatnot, it's about 600 nanometers. So 600 nanometers, 0.6 of a micron, it's pretty tall, okay? Um... And that, that's worth knowing. We'll, we'll come back to that. Now, when you have inflammation and white blood cells are attracted to a location of a blood vessel, normally they don't bind because uh, endothelium has a negative charge. That's its zeta potential. And the white blood cell has a negative charge. That's its zeta potential. And they repel each other. Okay. PMN means polymorphonuclear leukocyte. You know, basically it means a funny looking nucleus that has multiple different possible shapes. It's segmented. The reason why the neutrophil uh, nucleus is segmented is because neutrophils are big. They're about 14 microns in diameter. Typical capillary is about five microns in diameter. So in order for this neutrophil to get through a capillary, it really has to kind of squish itself down into like a torpedo shape. And having an elongated nucleus that can also conform to that shape helps it to be able to deform itself and be flexible enough to pass through these capillaries. Okay? You can also see that a red blood cell passing through a capillary is only about 5 microns. I'm sorry, red blood cell is about 7 microns. Capillary intrinsic diameter is about 5 microns. So our red blood cells also have to deform to fit through a capillary, but neutrophils have to deform a lot. A neutrophil and a PMN are the same thing. Okay? Um, What's going to happen is when the neutrophils are activated, they're going to release these positive charges. These positive charges are called MPOs, myeloperoxidase. And you'll see, you can look this up in five seconds. Mice were given a high-fat diet, and then they released myeloperoxidase, and these neutrophils all start accumulating along the blood vessels. Okay. Um, they initially do something called rolling, where they'll connect to like selectins, and then they do something called adhesion, where they connect to other proteins along the endothelial cell surface called integrins, and then they can even squeeze themselves in between endothelial cells once these tight junctions are opened up. That's called diapedesis, and having this elongated 
segmented nucleus also helps the neutrophils to be enabled to undergo diapedesis, means passing into the subintimal space. Okay, and that's when you really have a lot of inflammation. And the reason they would do that is, imagine you have a bacteria uh, down in the subendothelial space, like you got, you know, bitten by a dog or something. Okay, and uh, then they would have to get in there to help to fight off the bacterial infection. That's the purpose of having neutrophils. Neutrophils are about 65% of your white blood cells in your blood. So they're by far the most common white blood cell. They are the first responders with an acute injury or an acute infection. Okay. And these little negative uh, particles, you know, these positive charges released by them are the myeloperoxidase. Okay. So to be positively charged is called cationic. cationic. Uh, the negative charge is to be anionic. Okay. I remember cationic positive for a cat purrs. So cat and then positive purrs. That's how I remember it. Okay, what does MPAO do? So MPO is the most abundant protein in the neutrophil granules. It means MPO means myeloperoxidase, so MPO. And what it does is it catalyzes a reaction that basically makes bleach. It combines water and chlorine and oxygen superoxides to make bleach, and then the bleach kills bacteria. So that's what it does, because the job of the neutrophil is to kill the bacteria, to protect you from an infection, so the bacteria don't replicate inside you, okay? And MPO has two major properties that are relevant to our discussion. The first one is, like I said, it's an enzyme, and it catalyzes this reaction to make bleach, to kill bacteria. But it also has a very, very um, positive charge, and that will have an effect on the endothelial glycocalyx, and that's the main topic of this talk. Okay, so here's a neutrophil floating along in the blood, and then the person eats a high-fat meal. The dietary fat, then, is seen by the neutrophil as abnormal, and it will become activated. When it becomes activated, it'll start releasing these little red circles called MPO, myeloperoxidase. These little red circles have a very strong positive charge. The reason is they're a protein. Myeloperoxidase is a protein, okay? And it has lots and lots of positively charged amino acid side chains that stick out from it. Those positively charged amino acid side chains are lysine and arginine. It'll have 70 of them, you know, on its molecule. So that's tons of positive charge. And it will then bind with these core proteins coming up from the endothelial glycocalyx. Because remember, they're very negatively charged. That's the zeta potential. And the positive charge of the MPOs will bind to the negative charge. Uh, so the blue, the dark blue, uh, protein here standing up. That's the core protein, the syndican we spoke about earlier. The side light blue um, uh, things are the glycosaminoglycans, meaning for our purposes heparin sulfate, okay, and they're very negatively charged. So MPO binds to the heparin sulfates and then the whole glycocalyx will collapse downward and that's a big deal because these glycocalyx uh, core proteins, when they're standing up, they're 600 nanometers high. Okay, these little binding proteins like selectins and tegrins, the thing we were just talking about, you know, the selectins are only about 50 nanometers high. So you have to collapse the core proteins down in order to expose these binding proteins so the neutrophils can bind to the endothelium. All right, and not only does the neutrophil release MPOs, myeloperoxidase, it also releases these little yellow things that look like Pac-Man, and that stands for MMP, which means matrix metalloproteinase. And these matrix metalloproteinase, once they get down here to the base of the syndicant core protein, they will cut these things, they'll chop them, and then they're shed off, okay, and they go flowing away in the blood. So the relevance is that cause even more exposure of these binding proteins, okay? And this has an effect to recruit more neutrophils to the endothelium because once one neutrophil is activated and bound there, chemicals are released that cause additional neutrophils to bind to it. So you get a bit of a vicious cycle effect. Um, so that is quite interesting because all of this is really bad for blood flow. Okay, if you start plugging up your capillaries with these neutrophils, you know, you're going to have a hard time getting any red blood cells past that. You're going to have a hard time oxygenating your tissue. This is part of the reason why a high-fat meal drops oxygenation of tissue by like about 20%. Uh, it's not a good thing, okay? And it takes the body a little while to reverse this, okay? Like, okay, number one, I try to only eat low-fat plant foods. But if I uh, ate something inadvertently high-fat, I would eat... <laughs> 
you know, a lot of my, uh, like, uh, my Esselstyn routine, eat a lot of greens, get more nitric oxide. Because also, there's a little more to it than that. Some of the MPO gets transcytose to the endothelial cell and goes into the subintimal, subendothelial space. And it has a negative interaction. It oxidizes some of the uh, matrix proteins in the uh, subendothelial space. But anyways, this is a key point. I want you to know this. High-fat meal activates neutrophils, causing them to release MPO, and the MPO trashes the endothelial glycocalyx. Glycocalyx kind of means like sugar coating because the heparin sulfates are like a sugar. And so once it collapses them down, then the neutrophils can have exposed binding proteins and they'll bind to them. And now you're in like the beginning of forming a clot. You're in an inflammatory process and they're going to start going endothelial. So this is all important. You know, this is another reason. The reason I'm showing you all this is the high fat meals have a very bad effect on blood flow. It's real bad, you know. When you're 20 years old, you got tons of physiologic reserve and you can handle this very easily. But the older you get, the more fragile you get. The less your endothelium produces nitric oxide, okay? The more baseline injury you have to your endothelium from atherosclerosis, for example. So you're less able to tolerate and handle these things without doing irreversible damage. So, you know, fat is not your friend. It's like like Dr. McDougal said, the biggest toxin in the Western diet is fat. Like Nathan Pritikin said, fat is bad. Okay, so I'm showing you all this so you don't get turned into a chump and you know start eating all this high fat stuff like a lot of people are trying to sell you on the internet. Okay, um, this is just showing that you could reverse the effect by injecting heparin. Heparin is a medication. Notice heparin has an I at the end rather than heparin sulfate had a heparan at the end of that word. Okay, and this will also have negative charges and that'll those will bind to the MPO and help remove it from the endothelial glycocalyx. Also, the endothelium of the arterial cells it can regrow these core proteins. So it's a it's a transient phenomena that the body uses, you know, to heal itself or to fight off an infection. Okay. So anyways, I thought that was very interesting, and that's another one of the reasons why high-fat diets are uh, bad for blood flow and arterial health. So I hope you found that helpful.